Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and it has been a long time. A very, very long time. But anyway, welcome to Master Duel Dragoonities. Platinum Experience <laughs> Master Duel Dragoonities. I have nothing but good things to say about Master Duel. I love this game, and ever since this game dropped, I have been streaming it, I have been playing nothing but Dragoonities on my main account, and this is what we have to show for it. This deck has been a blast. I have gone from rookie to platinum, with this deck ex explicitly, have played nothing else, and this deck has been performing quite well. And it's actually been really interesting to play Master Duel and play Master Duel with Dragoonities because it being a best of one format on the ranked ladder means that you have to make different deck building decisions than you would make in the TCG, and those are reflected in this deck list that you see. Cards that I would like never play in the TCG in best of threes, like Armagram, are in this deck because I took losses by not having this card in my deck that I had access to this card, and if I had been able to access that card, if it had been in my deck list, I would have won those games. I would have stolen wins with it. In a best of one, this card really carries its weight and actually does pretty well to out things like, force things like Zeus's, out Windas, stuff like that. But in a best of three, I would never consider running this card seriously because you have side decked games where you can side deck direct outs to those people's decks, so you don't have to worry about that. You can take a game loss to these cards and just have side decked games to correct what you have as a problem in your deck list, right? But in a best of one, this card pulls its weight ridiculously well. And then there's also a card in Master Duel that we do not have in the TCG that I've been waiting on for a couple of years at this point that I'm really excited to be playing with and really excited to showcase you guys some combos with today, and that is Samsara Dragon. This card is nuts. This card completely changes the power dynamic of what you can do with two cards in a Dragoonity deck. It makes it to where, as you can see, there's no Guard Dragon cards or Guard Dragon related combo pieces in my extra deck. We're not playing Pisty. We're not playing Striker Dragon. We're not playing these combos that I've been doing offhandedly on streams and stuff for the last eight months since I haven't posted to YouTube without LP. You've been able to play Dragoonities and do Guard Dragon combos in Dragoonities without LP ever since LP got banned last July. But, with Samsara Dragon Legal, you actually do combos that are superior to what the Guard Dragon combos were doing at the beginning of 2019 and 2020 for this deck just by playing Samsara Dragon. Now, if you don't know what this card does, this card is effectively like a Steam the Cloak, but it is far superior because this card actually effectively turns a Tum into a Soul Charge. You summon four to five monsters with it every single time you use it. Now, this card's effect is this card can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a dragon monster. That's not relevant for our purposes. What is relevant is its graveyard effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one level five or higher dragon monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then immediately after this effect resolves, you can tribute summon that monster, and you can only use that effect once per turn. What you're going to be doing with this is you are going to be using it to get a Mistleton back from the graveyard and tribute the Mistleton with your additional normal summon that it grants you, tribute summon over Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. So then the Mistleton gets to equip a Dragoonity from Grave, because you normal summoned it and it summoned from hand, and then the Spheres gets to summon a Darkness Metal from your deck, which gets to revive Gaederg to use its effect a third, possibly fourth time that turn, depending on what your hand was and how you were stringing your combos along. That's insane. That's Soul Charge. Making a Tum, summon Samsara Dragon from deck and link into Spheres? That's Soul Charge, because you just get to do the Samsara Dragon Spheres play. And you'll be seeing that in a lot of these replays. Um, not going to go through this deck card by card, because that would take way too much time. I already have a lot of replays I want to show you, with a lot of information to digest. But basically, like... This has been a very fun format to play in, and I'm actually, like, super excited to keep playing this game. If you have any questions about the deck list, feel free, comment down below, or better yet, join my Discord server. Link is in the description down below. You'll be notified when I do live streams where I've been playing this deck a lot, so if you really want to see, you know, information overload of how this deck operates, you're more than welcome to go check that out. And also, there is a Master Duel section in my Discord and a dedicated Dragoonity discussion channel where I've put you know, ideas and thoughts and stuff like that and talking with other people. There's a lot of stuff there. So if you're interested, the link is in the description. It's a resource for you to use. Otherwise, leave a comment asking questions or whatever if you're just too lazy to join a Discord server and get real-time feedback from me and other people. Otherwise, 
let's just jump into some of the replays I have to show you. It was actually hard for me to whittle down the replays to the best ones that I could show you because there are just so many good replays with this deck, but I digress. Let's jump into some of the replays, and this is the best of what I thought that I could show you. Lots of varied information on how this deck plays and all that sort of stuff. So let's jump right in. All right, so in this first game, I'm actually gonna be showing you how far you can go comboing with just a bare minimum amount of cards. Basically, just how far Normal Summon Ducks can get you as long as you have access to at least one tuner is really all you need to see here. And I have, I have the replays on super fast speed, fast forwarded, and I have the log up so that you can, you know, have as much information as possible because otherwise there's no way I could get nearly as much information in this video as I had. But my Cards of Consonants got Ash Blossomed, so had to activate Ravine, discard the other tuner that I had, Normal Summon Ducks, and go from there. I couldn't start with a Barca, which would have gotten most resources out of that Ducks, but I'm capable of just going into the Romulus, into Glow Line, Tribute for Mistleton, Mistleton equipped the Gaederg, Glow Effect from Grave to Special Summon the Equipped Gaederg, Gaederg gets to add and discard Zephyros here, and then we get to make the Atom. And now here is where the combo really starts getting nice. We get to go the Atom, summon the Samsara Dragon from deck, and then make the Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. Samsara Effect from Grave, target the Mistleton, add the Mistleton to hand, immediately additional Normal Summon the Mistleton by tributing the Spheres, Chain Link 1 Spheres, Chain Link 2 Mistleton equipped from Grave, Mistleton gets to equip the Coos if it's there, or just equips any tuner that you want, and then the Darkness Metal comes out of the deck off the Spheres. Darkness Metal bringing back the Gaederg, big, nice. Now the Gaederg is unused here as well, which is nuts, because it means that your Red Med gets to be bounced for the Zephyros to be a card for you to discard off of the Gaederg to get any extender you want into your hand. Now, I could have done this by discarding the Oblite, and by like bouncing Ravine and keeping the Red Men on the board to be a monster, but I wanted to keep the Oblite because I keep drawing this card for some reason, and I want to put it on my ending board, but drawing it makes it really hard to navigate your plays around. So effectively, this entire combo was Ravine discarding Phalanx. It was a, th a two-card combo because the Cards of Constance got ashed. I only had three cards. The Oblite was one of those cards, and the Oblite is still in my hand here meaning that this was all effectively a two-card combo. And without Remus, I wasn't able to end on another negate. I could have ended on Crystal Wing alongside the Areed Bear, Savage, and uh, Spheres that you see here, but I didn't have a uh, Remus in the graveyard. And that was actually probably something that I should have uh, like gotten access to, but at the same time, that would have required me discarding just any card out of my hand, and in this case, it would have been the Oblique that I didn't want to. But playing against Tri-Brigade negated the Desires because that's an easy negate, and then bouncing the normal summoned Fractal after he loaded his grave, and then getting the Dark Worm out of the deck to get the free card so that I can have something to discard for Ravine next turn, and he just understands that the game is over. And if you thought that all I was going to be showing you were replays where I do full combo only, then you are sorely mistaken. This replay is actually one where I get hand-trapped to death and still win the game. I go Cards of Consonants, he chains Max C immediately, and I chain Call by the Grave. Luckily, I had it to negate the Max C, and banish it from the grave so I don't have to play under max C. The card's constant resolves. Drawing a Remus Zephyr is very good, but then I get Droll and Lock Birded, so I can't even activate the Remus. So Normal Summon Remus, Special Legatus from hand, make Vajrayana, equip the Coos, Special the Coos, treat the Coos as a level 4 with the Vajrayana to make a Reed Bear, and now I have Revolution Dragon that I can use to Special Summon the Vajrayana back, and the Remus is engraved unused as well. Summoning the Remus, linking both of those into Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres, and now I am very well off. He summons a Cobalt Sparrow, very, very obviously telegraphing that he has a Sapphire Swallow in hand, activating the Spheres, and he just completely just scoops. And now here's a replay that's actually something I'm really proud to show you. This opponent won the die roll and made me go first, making me think that they were hard on a lot of hand traps, Nibiru, all that sort of stuff. So 100% going to be going out of my way to play around Nibiru this game by making Crystal Wing as early as possible, but activating some cards of consensus, putting a Destruder in Grave, putting a Tuner in Grave, and then going for the Legatus Remus play without Normal Summoning. So I have not Normal Summoned yet, and I've got Baby Rock in hand, meaning I get to add Ducks here and discard the Baby Rock. Baby Rock summons, and then I get to make Crystal Wing as my fifth summon, and when this fifth summon hit, my opponent's field lit up, and I was like, ooh, baby, I was right. And then they activated this Dogmatica thing from their hand, which makes me think that they were just trying to see if I would just yep buttons, negate it, and then drop Nibiru because it kept flickering the response window back to their board, and previously there had not been any response window 
on anything that I had done. No, like, on searching, no max C window, obviously, no imperm windows, nothing. It literally was as soon as I flicked to the fifth summon was when they got that. And fortunately, I just now get to full combo with Crystal Wing on my board. Got to normal summon Ducks, make Barka, because the Gator is already in circulation, getting the two tuners back and making Romulus that way, so the Barka just gets to stay on the board. And now we're just going for the Atum into Samsara, into Spheres, into getting back the Mistleton with Samsara, and Tribute summoning the Spheres play. Like, this play is so good. Samsara Dragon by itself literally replaces everything that the entire Guard Dragon package that we were doing tries to do. I'm talk I'm not talking just LP Pisty. I'm talking LP Pisty Agrapane. All three of those cards, what we're doing with the deck right now is replaced by Samsara Dragon by itself. And the problem with Samsara Dragon that we had that made it a little bit unreliable to uh, to play in previous builds uh, was that you had to have missile you had to have missile in every hand. But fortunately, Konami printed a card called Dragoonity Glow that's searchable off Romulus, and it's part of every single combo that we ever do. And that means that, yeah, Mistleton is in every hand. There's literally no world where you Mistleton isn't in our hand because we're searching it with Glow mid-combo. But so, making Ascalon to banish that Dogmatic off the board before I pass, I have the uh, I have a bunch of Negates and the uh, Spheres, so it's all good from there. But yeah, this deck is just really, really nice. Now this match is interesting, well, I shouldn't say match, this game is interesting. I'm going second, as you can see, my opponent goes Normal Summon Alistair, because for some reason when you have an insanely very competent combo card pool, some people still want to summon Alistair the Invoker, but I have Max C, and so I Max C in response to the Alistair effect to add, because I know it's going to result in me getting two draws if he goes for the Makaba, and so, I mean, it's just free, right? Why not? Why not get a free card to throw into the Makaba so that you can, you know, have something to throw into the Negate? And honestly, I'm really trying to draw one of those evenly matched here. <laughs> I would really love to, uh, especially now that he's got two sets. And, but I've got a ton of cards, a ton of ways to navigate around this Makaba, a ton of ways to navigate around a bunch of interactions, actually. But I see a schism that he was un like that he was lucky enough to draw. Unlucky for me. And he Makaba negates my Remus effect in the graveyard. And by doing that, he discarded a Shadal Beast, and then he just shotguns Alistair on my normal summon so that he has two darks in grave, so that he can now schism for Winda. And this is the game that caused me to put Armagram back into the into the decklist. Armagram was not in the decklist at this point. And if Armagram had been in this decklist, I could have gotten access to Armagram, baited Makaba, and then summoned Armagram, and negated Winda, and then, because Makaba's already uh, baited at this point. Now I am locked under the Winda summon for this turn, but I've got Glow, which I could have used to get Armagram. And I could have just done something to bait Makaba before uh, summoning Armagram uh, to uh, deal with the wind up. But now I literally just have like no win condition. Uh, there's literally not any win condition that I have because I can't out the wind up. I keep trying to figure out ways to navigate how to out the wind up. I'm like, okay, I could summon ducks. Ducks would go to 19 by equipping one. I could Samsara Dragon tribute the tuner, make it 23. Um, there's there's a, a couple different ways that I'm thinking to navigate around this, but unfortunately I just do not have the time. Uh, the clock is definitely ticking for me, especially since Shadal Fusion comes down. Uh, but the the play that I was trying to structure towards was Ducks gains 200 attack for every Dragoonity card on the field, obviously. I was going to Ducks, equip a tuner, special that tuner, and then since I can't special summon anymore, I was going to have to use the Samsara Dragon to add back Mistleton and tribute over the tuner, and then re-equip the tuner with the Mistleton, and that would be three Dragoonity cards on field, uh, but even that was not enough to deal with the window because only having uh, three Dragoonity cards on the field only puts Ducks to uh, to 21, so I was desperately trying to figure out a way for me to get to a, uh, a fourth Dragoonity card on the field, but there was literally no way for me to do it, and after that game, Armagram went straight back in. Now, if you think I'm only going to be showing you hands that I open full combo, no, this is definitely a teaching experience to learn how to mitigate losses you don't need to take. You might look at this hand and think this hand sucks. I look at this hand, thought about it for a second, and realized this hand is full combo. <laughs> By normal summoning the Dark Worm and specialing the, uh, specialing the uh, Red Bed with, uh, with scaling up my Pendulum stuff, I was able to make Romulus, Search Ravine, I've already got the Glow in hand, I've got Zephyros, which is also a very big extender, and now I'm just capable of playing my deck, because, like, I'm just capable of summoning Remus here because Romulus is on the board, making Gaederg, I already have access to Glow, so that's fine. And we even get to go about business of making a Crystal Wing before we go super deep into the combo. 
and that hand did not look like something that people would normally look at and go, yo, this hand is completely playable. Just so much stuff is capable of being done here, and you just have to identify those play lines. If you don't identify those play lines, then you're just taking extra losses that you do not need to take. But going into this game, this game is going to be showing you what you can do with just Remus being your only true combo piece. It's Remus and a bunch of awkward cards to have in your opening hand that are great combo pieces if you have the right cards, but not really the best when you consider the fact like that I had to call by the grave this Ash. In any other hand, I probably would have let that Ash Blossom go, but now I have to 100% commit to trying to play as much as I can without normal summoning because this player also won the die roll and told me to go first. So I'm thinking, all right, that Ash Blossom, thank God there's not a Max Sia here. There's more than likely some form of Nibiru in play, possibly. I can only imagine he's maining three Nibiru if he told me to go first, right? I've already Ash Blossomed, uh, called by the grave the Ash Blossom, so I already have that form of interaction gone. And so what I'm doing here is effectively just the Remus combo. I'm doing full combo without normal summoning with just Remus. And the point being is that this Remus combo is really, really uh, robust, depending on how you want to take it, because you could do the entire combo with just Remus discarding a couple of cards. You can get all the way through Samsara Dragon, all the way into some stuff, or you could just go into a Crystal Wing. Like, it, it's, it's really up to you how far you want to take it. But the fact that I have not Normal Summoned and that Ravine is back in my hand means that I can just do this combo, and at any point, if I get nibiru I can just Ravine for Ducks, and there's a bunch of tutors in my graveyard because of how deep I've gone with this Remus combo. But, fortunately, no Nibiru was there, and I got my way to a Crystal Wing, and so we're capable of going. And now, here is where the combo is actually a little bit inefficient, because I forgot that I didn't make Romulus early, because I'd opened the Glow. Now, opening the Glow was irrelevant, because I could have just made the Romulus, um, and searched Glow that way, and kept going uh, through that uh, playline. But, so, now this combo is actually a little bit inefficient, because of the fact that now, instead of Romulus being in the graveyard, I have to use it as one link material towards my spheres. Uh, but, it is what it is, honestly. Now here, I was actually considering overlaying that Barca, that Barca on the left, and the Crystal Wing into Titanic Galaxy for my ending board. Because, I've got a Reed Bear, I've got a Search to Bleat off of the Romulus, and I've just got this Barca that's just chilling here with nothing under it. And I was considering making the Titanic Galaxy by overlaying the Crystal Wing, like trading one form of negation for another but ultimately decided against it. And my opponent was playing Cubics or something, going second Cubics, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, the things that I've been finding in Plat in between playing against real decks is kind of nuts. I don't understand. <laughs> but, so here's the last replay I'm gonna be showing you. Going second against Drytron, I've opened double Max C. must be fucking nice. <laughs> and so, he opens Alpha Zeta, a very strong two card combo, but not stronger than the little insect. So, passing turn, Normal summoning Senatus, discarding a Tuner, summoning a Phalanx from deck, making Gaydurg, and we have Armagram in hand, meaning that is an easy discard that is recurrable later to get a Remus. So, getting Remus, discarding Remus for Ravine, playing the Ravine, and the Ravine gets green-lighted here, which is actually insane, because that Ravine was not really something that I cared if it resolved or not. I was just going to discard one of these duplicate Maxis that I have in order to get another card to discard off Gaydurg uh, throughout the combo line, but... We'll just easily go Remus summon from Grave, make Romulus, get Glow, and then the Glow not being negated by Green Light is huge. So at this point, I know that his hand is Benton and one unknown, and if it was an Orange Light, it would have been activated already. If it's a Maxi, it would have been activated already. If it was an Ash Blossom, it would have been activated already. The response windows are not ticking over, and we've gone to five summons, and the response window still hasn't ticked over to the opponent. So I know that it's free reign to do the entire Sam Sara Dragon play and just absolutely eviscerate his life points going second. Now the big thing that I'm a pro like the big thing that I dislike about this deck is how many steps it takes to do things that other decks could do just as impactful of a play with less clicks. That is one of those things I don't think that I can in good faith recommend this deck for people to play if you're less experienced with it. Because if you take any time at all thinking about your plays, either before or mid combo, then you're going to end up in a situation where you are running low on time. I have not had any major problems with the timer, but that is strictly because I am very fast at clicking what cards are going where, and I'm thinking about my play very quickly. I know exactly what my cards can do, I know exactly what my play can do, all that sort of stuff. But as you can see, I'm just going 
for game, and my opponent surrenders, which unfortunately, because they surrendered, means that I did not get to OTK them, meaning I did not get any progress towards the demon uh, secret title badge, which is, I think, OTKing people five times. Sag. And so that is everything that I have to show you today. I had so much more that I could have shown you, more replays that did not make the cut, but I just didn't want this video to be 30 to 45 minutes long. I had that much good footage of platinum level gameplay against real decks, against multiple varied scenarios, multiple different ways to combo, comboing through multiple interruptions, all that sort of stuff. I had so much that I could have shown you, but unfortunately for a video length, couldn't put it in here. So I'm sorry about that, but if you're interested in seeing more of the Dragoonity gameplay, then definitely consider following my Twitch page where I live stream a couple times a week. I've been playing Dragoonity on stream a lot recently because of Master Duel. And also there is the Discord channel that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Link is in the description down below if you want. There is a Master Duel category in there and a dedicated Dragoonity discussion for Master Duel in there, as well as a dedicated Dragoonity discussion uh, channel for the TCG as well. But unfortunately, Dragoonity is worse than the TCG because of Samsara Dragon not being imported yet. But I digress. Other than that, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your time. It feels so good to be recording a video again, and I hope to be recording a lot more consistent Master Duel content, whether it's something that I can, you know, rope into with the streams or whatever. I just, it feels so good to finally be uploading a video and filming a video and editing a video again. And actually, I finally feel like I'm back in my, you know, element. And I'm doing it with a deck that I love, my favorite deck in the game, Dragoonity. And having a blast, and having a positive win rate with it. Nuts! Thank you, Master Duel, for invigorating everything that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! all at once. Things that I thought that I did not like anymore. But anyway, as I already said, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I will see you in the next video.